Hey, what's up? So I think Apple's actually finally doing it. They're actually switching to the ARM chip and it should be out, I think, in 2021. Let's talk a little bit about it and see what people are saying. Let's go. All right, so in this video, let me just set this up. There's some, a lot of rumors and things like that right now about Apple, and they're actually maybe going to their own architecture for the CPUs away from Intel to their ARM-based chips. And, uh, you know, obviously with, with what they have on the iPods and, um, I'm sorry, iPads, iPods, I, iPads, um, some chips like that that might be using for the laptops. And the architecture is a little bit different for Mac OS and iOS and, and various other reasons. But long story short, they're going to be doing this in 2021 on some of their, some, some of the laptops. So at least that's what people are thinking right now. So... What this video is going to be about is I want to go ahead and show you what's coming out as far as the news on that and show people, you know, why, you know, what, what are people saying? What are, what, what, you know, what are the complications with this and what are the advantages with this? So again, everyone stay safe. I know that this, this world virus is going around some kind of filming and, you know, in a weird spot right now. Um, I don't have a lot of access to what I would normally be doing. So I'm trying to make videos just to kind of keep, keep people informed on different products and different things coming out. So hopefully, you know, give me a thumbs up and I'll make sure my video is a little bit cleaner in the, in the future. Um, long story short, though, let's dive into it. I'm just going to kind of go through with a screen share and show you a little bit about what's going on, what are the rumors, again, and, and what are the pros and cons of this. And, uh, and hopefully people will kind of chime in in the comments and let me know as well. Um, anyways, let's get into it and we'll see what, you know, people are saying. All right, so here's the first article I wanted to go over, and this is actually from TechSpot, but there's a ton of articles like this, and these are all the news that's, you know, everything's been in the news lately. So it says Apple will launch several ARM-based Macs in 2021, including desktops. So let's go ahead and take a look at this. And again, this is just a bunch of articles coming out. I want to let people know what, what these top people think is coming. It says, while the transition from Intel to ARM has been speculated since 2010, it looks like Apple's really close to launching laptops and desktops to execute on the idea. Um, basically, the main reason for this is the company is going to reduce its dependence on Intel processors and pave the way for more unique features when compared to Windows PCs. So it says, you know, Apple is slowly ditching, you know, the famous butterfly keyboard, which we all know about. And they're, all, you know, obviously replacing these, these newer models uh, with the 14-inch possible MacBook Pro this year, 16-inch last year. So they're making some changes to these this last generation, they think, of the Intel processors. Um, it says the company's next step is strengthening the Mac computers to move from Intel-based to ARM-based. And uh, it, it still could be a couple years, it says, one or two years until they figure out. Really, the, the, the hard part is making it right here easy for developers to transition their apps from working with CISC architecture to running well on RISC. So that's one of the things. Again, this is Ming Chai Kao. It's basically the guy that you know has a lot of these predictions. He's usually right. Sometimes he's been wrong. But it says Apple may be fast tracking this transition with an aggressive processor replacement strategy. So he says the first Macs with ARM CPUs will supposedly arrive in quarter four of this year, and then some more transitioning in 2021. So if you look at that, um, the main reason again for this is kind of right in this article here. It says basically that the Apple's cost on the CPUs would go down from you know be a savings of around 40 to 60 percent if they did this and the, you know that's actually pretty big for them because you know an average CPU cost on some of the major Intel like i9s and stuff can be four or five hundred bucks so it might save two to three hundred dollars on a system so that could be a considerable savings to the end user as well um, as we kind of go down here it also says let's see here um, he, he does think it's going to actually raise the shipments by as much as 50% to 30 million units instead of 20 million a year for Apple. So that's, you know, big, big, just because of the uh, increase in speed that these ARM chips may actually come with. They're supposed to be faster than the Intel, but it's hard to say. Obviously, the ARM chips are being used right now currently, like in the, in the I, iPad Pros and things. But there's a problem with it, and we'll kind of get into that in a second. It's basically the coding around it and how the, the applications and the prior applications are going to work. So, you know, they're going to start with more of a... a a kind of a lower end MacBook at you know to begin with and that's going to basically be where they start and then they're going to try that out and then from there they're going to maybe go with some other more mainstream type products later so just just know that that's coming all right so let's get into some of the comments and the pros and cons of this and this is kind of just fun to read kind of gives you a good idea of what some of the pros can be and what some of the cons can be so the pros of going to the arm so it says look i think mac os and ipad os are good but there's absolutely nothing preventing them from merging the best features of each dynamically adjusting giving you know, dy dynamic hardware design. On the plus side, a great deal of macOS users are already used to getting apps only from the Mac store, which is essentially what will be necessary for ARM-based Macs, and which is one of the sticking points of ARM-based Windows PCs. 
So that's that's one of the, the pro comments. Um, there's a very good reason from a consumer standpoint to combine OS's and if they move their laptop desktops to ARMS, which is context of this article and these comments, app unification. So they'll basically be able to have apps, you know, obviously they won't be different on, on Mac OS versus iOS. No more buying a tablet version of a desktop version of the same app. They will run on the same architecture. There shouldn't be a need for two separate apps. UX optimization and form factor can be handled at the OS level and MS um, and MS has proven that, Microsoft. I can only imagine how much better Apple engineers would tackle it if it was given a tight hardware integration. Let's keep going. A couple more. ARM is the future, and I'm glad to see that Apple's making the transition sooner rather than later. Trust and believe that all Macs will run on ARM in five years. He's saying five years. We're saying one or two. And the performance will be insane as no for no other reason than you can squeeze a lot more performance without a lot of cooling, he says. So that's one reason, the performance and the cooling. This guy says here, I don't really have a dog in the fight either, but it would say that the move from PowerPC to x86 worked out extremely well for Apple and its users. That was the last transition they made. So massive shifts like this can work. The next entry says they started out with Motorola 68K line, then transitioned to the joint IBM Motorola PowerPC line, which is their old architecture, then transitioned again to Intel. Apple has a lot of experience with switching processor architectures, and I'm guessing the big software companies who maintain Mac versions moved away from having hard to port assembly code during one of these previous two transitions. All right, so the next one says, hopefully they will reduce prices to lower the cost of entry without losing money and to add more powerful machines at similar prices. Performance matters to me. I'll still buy the top of the line MacBook Pros. This one says ARM does have a higher performance per watt than x86, so Apple could build an ARM CPU with 45 watt TP TDP, likely a 24 or 34 core chip. It would have well over twice the real world performance as the existing i9 MacBook Pro. All right, so let's look at some of the cons here for the ARM architecture. The first person says Apple could merge Mac OS and iPad OS, but should they is a whole other issue. Honestly, it seems like a lazy way out. Apple's already made a great laptop and tablet user experiences. Throwing that away would be a waste of effort. So they're basically saying, you know, iPad OS can be frustrating, but iPads are still the most popular tablets out there by a wide margin. And one of the few tablets that saw growth last quarter, a good part of that is thanks to the fact that iOS based is not just Mac OS shoved into an iPad body. So he's saying that. Um, the next one says the, theater, you know, the performance will be great, but the actual performance, especially when one is emulating desktop software, will not be that great. Also, the software selection will be massively further cut down. The next person here says there are certain workflows literally not possible on Macs because the software simply doesn't exist, especially a lot of stuff out there with the engineering realm straight up doesn't even get um, released on Macs, so it always depends on the perspective. All right, so the next user says, no, we'll likely make all desktop OS versions of Adobe software run even massively way worse. Like most, if not all of the desktop software it can emulate at all. So he's basically saying that, you know, all software will not run. Um, and so, you know, you're gonna have problems there. It will just, you know, Apple will have to just ask developers to redo all the software in ARM. So that's the big problem with that is how, how is Apple gonna actually handle that? The next person says it's it is not just about Adobe. It's all about legacy, all existing desktop apps, games, drivers, etc. The entire desktop OS ecosystem, and even more likely, Apple would be left behind than all those combined being left behind. So, every few years, Apple and Microsoft or both have the you know, hubris you know, that they think that they can still singly handedly decide all their users what to do, and he's saying that that's not going to you know be the case here because people are going to just be fed up with it more or less. So that's that person's article. And then a couple more here. Yeah, I'm not going to deal with the crippled system that forces me to rebuy all my current software and breaks boot camp compatibility and also Apple um, can further pad its profit margins. He says, if they do this, the, su the summer 13-inch MacBook Pro, I guess it might be a 14-inch, will be my last Mac. And then finally it says, so basically you have a more powerful iPad with no touchscreen that won't be usable for productivity and then most part it won't be able to run any x86 64 based software. So very similar type of uh, comments and all these things on the cons. So it really comes down to, yes, it's going to be faster, but is it going to be able to run the applications and how long is that going to take for those two things to merge? Are they going to start with a, a, a product that's basically a, a kind of a dumbed down laptop just to give it a shot and see how people transition or is it going to be all all at once on all their systems those are questions that need to be asked but you know it's just interesting to read people's comments and what they think anyways thanks again so what do you guys think um you know it's going to be interesting if this actually happens because you know apple's done this a couple times in the past and that's not always been a great thing so it does cause some confusion with programs running and everything else but 
I think this is the way they're going one way or the other, and there's really no way around it, so you're going to have to kind of think about it. Um, it may not happen in 2021 only because of what's going on right now in the world. You know, the whole world is basically, you know, shut down, and, uh, you know, we don't know how long that's going to last. But if it does go beyond this and what have you, and you know, things, you know, it might be 2022, somewhere in that range. But just keep in mind that this is coming, and they're going to, you know, they're pretty confident on doing this. So. Keep it in mind and, uh, you know, obviously when you're buying a new system now, just have that in the back of your mind as well. But, you know, it's going to cause some issues for some people and some people are going to love it. And that's just the way the world goes around. So anyways, again, you guys know me. I make videos on a lot of Mac stuff, a lot of PC stuff, finance, travel, everything else. So if you guys can subscribe and help me out, that would really, you know, really help me out. Please don't give me a negative comment because I'm kind of at a disadvantage with my filming and everything else right now with everything that's going on, but just trying to help people. So um, anyways, I'll talk to you guys in about a week or maybe less than a week. Take care and uh, be safe.